the only thing better than a Galaxy S20 beast is a Galaxy Note 20 that's just as capable or more powerful. Because yes, we get the first renders of some new details for the Galaxy Note 20 lineup. It looks like Apple's over-the-year AirPod Studio will come sooner rather than later, so hold your horses. And even Motorola is working on a new Moto Razr, and we hope they get it right this time. I'm Jaime Rivera, and tell me something, how much zooming capabilities do you care about on the camera of your smartphone? Let us know in the poll. This is Pocket Now Daily, sponsored by MediaTek. Stick around to learn why you should pick MediaTek for your next product purchase. The official news today begin with deals. Yes, it is pretty much Memorial Day weekend. So obviously lots of deals are available and we're stacking them up over the weekend in different lists that you should be looking forward to on the website. Now, how about if we start with the fact that Amazon currently has the Google Pixel 3a $120 off. That leaves the 64 gigabyte variant for 279 bucks and it gets better. That 3a XL is $160 off, leaving the 64 gigabyte variant for $319 shipped. The Marshall Kilburn 2 speaker that I adore is also $90 off, leaving it at $210 shipped. I highly recommend it. And finally, the second generation AirPods are $50 off, leaving those at $150 shipped with the wireless charging case. Once again, everything in the links in the description and keep it locked to pocketnow.com as we will be having some really good deals over the weekend. Now, for those of you that thought that the Galaxy S20 Ultra had a huge camera hump, I think a company just decided to be like, you know what, hold my beer. As Kate, hey, Vivo is teasing their new X50 Pro, which brings a gimbal-like camera. The company just released a new poster of the phone, which shows a quad camera module with a huge main sensor. Uh, this main camera sensor is a Samsung 50 megapixel ISOCELL GN1 sensor, which comes with dual pixel autofocus technology for faster focusing. It basically rotates on its axis as well like a gimbal for better stabilization. The other cameras will include periscopic zooming and most likely a wide angle and a macro camera. Now the reason why this matters is because if there is one operating system that does not do electronic stabilization well is Android. You notice the warping and all the moiré as you're walking with the plants and everything. This would pretty much fix that and apparently this phone is going to be available on June 1st so stay tuned. Obviously, we're covering the roadmap of all the other smartphones that will be launching over time. We can't wait to get more products. I mean, in this economy, it's always great to see companies going hard at it. And we've been covering what ASUS is doing. And we even remember how Qualcomm teased back in February of what companies are going to bring with the Snapdragon 865 and ASUS being a major player. It looks like both of these devices are ready to launch according to a new report from Taiwan, which claims the ROG Phone 3 and the Zen Phone 7 will either come on Q2 or early Q3 of 2020. Going by last year's launch date, if they do launch in July or August, they will be late by a couple of months when compared to their predecessors, but the market isn't at a great state right now. The company is currently targeting 30 to 50% growth in sales with the ROG Phone 3, and I would like to see that happen as, you know, it's not the best design phone, but I have to hand it to ASUS. They pretty much, well, not necessarily started the gaming category, but they went really aggressive on the price and the specs. So let's see what we get. Now, I'm gonna admit it. You guys know how excited I got over the original Moto Razr, and you know how that ended up. For those of you that ask me sometimes why I don't do a review of a certain product, it's because, God, like there are certain products that are just not worth it. And the idea of having a product fold and that nostalgia of the Razr was great, but the implementation was really bad. And apparently that's gonna change. According to Lenovo South African GM, the company is already working on a second generation device and it is supposed to come out in September. He actually mentioned the words generation two twice in a podcast while talking about the Razer. Leaks will most likely start coming in soon. And well, we hope that they finally actually give us a $1,500 flagship. For me, the problem with the Razer wasn't the price, it was what we got for that price. So if you remember the original Razer, the V3 wasn't really that great of a spec phone, but then the V3i changed everything. So I assume that this might be the Razer i We'll see. 
Now we've been covering how important these possible AirPods studios will be because apparently they're gonna change everything when it comes to design for over the ear headphones. And it's not that you really wanna reinvent the wheeler that we're looking for it unless they actually get it right, which is clearly something the company did with the Apple Watch. Now we have a new Digit Times report that claims that we'll be getting Apple AirPods Studio sooner rather than later. The report actually mentions the fact that Apple might be dropping the wired earphones from the iPhone 12's box like we covered yesterday, but it also mentions mentioned that Cupertino will resume regular shipments of AirPods 2 in the second half of this year, which I wonder if it has anything to do with the move of production to Vietnam, but it does match the timing of the possible AirPods studio. The company has apparently already started production of these, and honestly, I wonder if we're going to be able to see it at WWDC, which is happening in a couple of weeks. I hope that's the case. I'm really looking forward to some innovation in this market. Let's see what we get. And guys, before we get to the hottest news today, here's a word from today's sponsor, MediaTek. Did you know its technology powers the Amazon Echo Show 5? Its compact 5.5 inch display allows you to watch movies, TV shows, get daily briefs, run video calls, and listen to your favorite music. It features a MediaTek technology called far field communication, which is the reason why you can whisper at the speaker from a distance and have it detect your commands. You can currently find tons of sales for it on amazon.com in the first link of the description, and also Follow the second link to learn why brands like Amazon choose MediaTek for their products. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with this baby, or the successor to this baby. And just to give you an idea of how much I use the phone, I control the camera with this phone, and I've been doing so ever since it launched. And the Galaxy Note has been my second phone, or that powerhouse phone that I carry ever since generation two. So I could not be more excited to see a refresh and it seems that it's actually gonna be fantastic. We recently got some sketches from the Galaxy Note 20's design from Ice Universe, and now we get the first renders which were made based on the leaked design. The phone looks pretty similar to the Note 10 from the front, which is a very boxy design, but it does bring some major changes on the back. The camera on this one has a large hump, like on the S20 Ultra, but the buttons are also on the right side and the S Pen is moved to the left. Like seriously, common sense changes. Now, these aren't official renders, just yet, but this gives us a pretty good idea of what the changes might be. Galaxy Club just found some new information that claims that the Note 20 Plus will most likely bring a periscopic camera. Let's just hope it's not as large as it was on that Note 20. But anyways, it isn't clear that we will be getting an S20 Ultra successor, and it might just be that we're not getting 100x zoom, which is pretty fine for us. But yes, a uh, sort of a hybrid in the Galaxy Note 20 Plus where it brings some of the elements of the S20, but not necessarily all of them. And hopefully that camera hump is not gonna be massive. Let us know in the comments down below, what do you think about the design changes? Do you like them or not? Because I'm not gonna lie, I love that boxy front. I do hope that they bring the smaller punch hole at the top. And yes, honestly, I don't care about 100X. I just really do want some good periscopic zooming that's not necessarily as large. And Oppo has proven that it's completely possible. Huawei has proven it as well. And I hope that, you know, Samsung does the same, but let us know what you think in the comments down below. Friends, again, if you wanna get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me stay at home for more time. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the recap over the weekend.